This episode is sponsored in part by our friends at HID Extra. Go to HIDExtra.com to view the best in HID and LED headlight conversion kits and accessories for your Jeep, off-road toy, or daily driver. Stay tuned later in the show to find out how to get 15% off your entire order at HIDExtra.com. Also brought to you by us. You can now install an app on your phone and have the Jeep Talk Show episodes with you wherever you go. Just go to the Apple Store or Google Play and look for Jeep Talk Show. Don't forget to go into settings and select download the latest three episodes. That way, you'll have the show with or without cell service. Episode 279, May the 4th, be with you. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. Podcasting since 2010. Are you ready? It's the G-Talk Show. Talk Show. With Tammy on Wrangler. Tony and Josh on Cherokee. So sit back. Strap in. And brace yourself. Local Jeep News, National Jeep News, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. Well, is it seller's remorse or just somebody who doesn't know how things work? It all happens all too often. The age-old story. We've all heard it before. Girl finds Jeep. Girl sells Jeep. Girl forgets she sold Jeep. Girl remembers where she left the Jeep. Girl takes Jeep back. What? That doesn't happen all the time every day? No. no. In late March, investigators say Allison Rye Moore sold her Jeep to another local Tulsa, Oklahoma woman. A common mishap. I know everybody knows if you buy a Jeep, you don't sell it. You just buy more Jeeps, or at the very least, buy more Jeep parts. A few days later, authorities allege that Moore, in a fit of seller's remorse or perhaps a bad crack high, well, maybe even a really bad brain freeze, invaded the victim's home and demanded the vehicle back. Now, as if that wasn't ballsy enough unto itself, I mean, heck, it wasn't like the ink was still drying on the bill of sale. This was a done deal. But she did it. She did it like this. She did it like that. She did it with a wiffle ball bat. No, actually, detectives say that despite Moore swinging for the fences with a baseball bat in a sorry attempt to score a home run and get her Jeep back, the victim was able to summon the skills of a grappling master and wrestle the Louisville slugger away from the confused tweaker, tweaked out Jeep seller, and then did what any of us as a fresh Jeep owner would do in the situation. She hit her in the head with her own baseball bat. However, in poor form, a man who was with Allison Moore showed up to this bat fight armed with a gun. At that point, the pair reportedly stole the Jeep at gunpoint and, for good measure, robbed the poor victim of her cell phone, too. The local Tulsa detectives say they often see robberies when it comes to things like drug sales, but rarely do they see something like this with a vehicle sale, especially several days after the transaction. Police didn't identify how the victim and the suspect set up the initial sale, but say it's a good reminder to everybody to always stay vigilant, even after selling or buying something from another person, regardless of how the sale was set up in the first place. Moore is wanted on two counts of robbery, one count of burglary, and one count of auto theft. So far, the man has not yet been identified. Now, I, I wish I had a happy ending to this, guys. I, I really do. I mean, a tweaker thief getting bopped in the head with her own baseball bat is a little nice to hear, but unfortunately, police say the Jeep has since been recovered, but was totaled. Aww. Well, it's Ram to the rescue. Okay, I'm going to call it more of a save than a rescue, but... Ram pickup kept Fiat Chrysler sales from sliding further than 6.6% in April as Jeep sales continued to tumble. FCA so, so said it sold 177,441 light vehicles in the U.S. last month. The company says retail sales fell 3% from April 2016 and that fleet sales re represented 17% of its total sales. The Ram pickup pulled off a major fee in April, topping the Chevrolet Silverado in total U.S. sales for the second consecutive month and the third time in eight months. The pickup 7.6% sales gain offset slides in sales of Ram's commercial vans and allowed the brand to finish up 5.3% for the month, making it FCA's only mainstream brand to finish in April in positive territory. Dodge sales declined 2.6% and Chrysler brand sales slipped 3.3% in April despite strong performances by the Chrysler Pacifica minivan and Dodge Journey crossover. Dodge Durango and Challenger sales also rose when the sales of the rest of the two brands lineups fell in April. Remember the news of Jeep allegedly getting shopped around to other automakers? Well, that might have more to do with it than expected. Jeep sales slid for the eighth consecutive month, falling 17% from the same month a year ago. 
Among its lineup, Grand Cherokee was the only model to see positive numbers, with sales rising 6.2% while Wrangler sales were flat. The big dent comes from the lackluster sales performance of the brand's smaller vehicles. Fiat brand sales alone declined 18% across the board in April. SEA said it finished the month with 545,059 unsold vehicles in inventory, over an 80-day supply, one of the largest in FCA's recent history. Well, big thanks to all of you guys who continue to help us out each and every week by submitting stories for This Week in Jeep. If you have a response to any one of our stories or you got something you think we should be reporting on, well, by all means, send us an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com. I don't know if uh, if a minivan is is selling out selling everything else in your uh, inventory. That's uh, that's kind of bad, or either that or it's a really cool minivan. <laughs> well, now you got you got to take into consideration we've got we've got a couple models that are falling off, getting discontinued uh, in in a couple of, of realms, both with Jeep and and in Dodge um, and Chrysler for that matter. Um, we've got uh, we're right on the on the precipice of you know this is going to be the last year of a lot of vehicles and going to a new body style and a new new model, you know, even reference designator um, next year. And so some of this is a little bit of, well, this is just the end of a model run and you're going to see a little bit of a decline on sales numbers. But man, this is this is towards the top end of that. So, you know, how they're going to come out of this funk is really going to be interesting, especially as we roll into summer, which is, as we know, you know, big sales for all cars, all that's, car makers. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so, I'm trying to remember the the Wrangler new two letter designator is BJ, right? Nah, <laughs> only if you wish. <laughs> uh, no, it's going to be JL. Well, you stepped on my rim shot. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, well, that's a, that's a shame. It's going to be interesting to see what they do with the grill and uh, the nose, and uh, I just hope they don't. Uh, I hope they just don't screw it up. Tammy, you're going to have a, a rare Jeep. It's kind of like the TJs when the JKs came out. Yeah. So. What do you think? It's uh, well, you know, the nice thing is, is that even if you uh, you want to get a, a replacement for your Rubicon, which there's really no reason for you to, but if you if you had that itch to to buy another one, you could always get a a used one or a, a slightly used one, a gently used That's one. That's true. Uh, maybe they maybe it was somebody would be selling an all purple one. Would all purple be too much for you, uh, Tammy? Oh yeah. Really? I, I've, yeah, I've seen them, and it's just way too much purple. There, I mean, there is a line in the sand. We determined yeah. this. Yeah. So you could do a hot pink accents no, on the purple. Absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. Paint the coils hot pink and uh, those uh, little door inserts is what I was thinking. Oh man, that would that that just says off road all. Was she gonna over turn it. her Jeep into a My Little Pony? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ugly. <laughs> or as I say, U G Lee. Yeah. All righty. So. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, some interesting stuff. I mean, I hope uh, hope everything works out with Jeep. I don't want to, uh, you know. I just hope it's not some of our uh, reporting on Jeep that over the over the years. Oh that yeah, has caused, blame it on the Jeep talk show. I see <laughs> that's it called. You know, because we've got that kind of pull. <laughs> I'm so powerful. You're listening to Jeep Talk Show, the number one Jeep podcast at my mom's house. I think everybody's sweating tonight. Josh is wiping himself down. Tammy's been fanning herself or actually went and got a fan. So, oh, well. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. You are indeed, you lucky individual you. The Jeep Talk Show is just one of the many proud members of the 4x4 Radio Network. Just visit 4x4radionetwork.com, all one word there, and learn more about the 4x4 podcast, the Center Steer podcast, and the Trail Chasers podcast. And, of course, you can find us there, too. Hey, over the years, our followers have asked us for more Jeep Talk Show, and boy, we have delivered. You already know about the podcast, obviously, because you're listening to it, but now we've got a live call-in show, and there's, well, it's all about you guys and uh, our loyal listeners. Uh, get a chance to talk to the host directly, hear industry-leading interviews, and even a chance to talk to your Jeep live on air. Talk to your Jeep? That's cool. It must be a Bluetooth thing. It, it all happens every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Central Time. You call into our special uh, show number and we'll stream the show right over the phone and you won't miss a thing. Be sure to head over to jeeptalkshow.com and get the numbers you'll need to join in on the fun. And hey, don't forget to download this extra content each week or subscribe and never miss an episode. Download the uh, uh, the app on iTunes or uh, the Apple Store, Android Store, and you won't miss an episode. And hey, check out the latest episode number 36 where Tony and Tammy interview Nora. 
No, 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 not anti Nora. No, actually, they go in depth with Scott from Northeast Off Road Adventures, the Off Road Driving School, the training facility located in the Catskill Mountains in Ellenville, New York. We'll hear a little of the backstory and how this iconic off road destination came to be. Well, it's over, Jeepers, and despite our best efforts to shove free stuff <laughs> down your ever loving Jeep throats, we just couldn't get you guys to swallow. Oh, uh, Josh. I mean, <laughs> I think what Josh is trying to say here uh, is that you missed out on the Jeep Talk Show's second Jamic giveaway. It was uh, just like the first, where all you had to do was send us a fa Facebook Live video to enter to win. I guess we have to take a break. Uh, <laughs> the safety scissors and crayons for the next rules. I will have to break out the safety scissors and crayons for the next rules. Until then, be sure to subscribe to the show. Uh, that way, you'll be the first uh, for the next Jeep Talk Show prize giveaway. Shut up and listen. Shut up. So shut up. You don't shut up. Shut up, Shane. Hey. <laughs> shut up and listen. It's time for Wrangler Talk. It's time for G-Mama. Tony and Josh, I have to say, I am totally obsessed with Dan from The Road Shows Me. <laughs> right. Um, I Husband loves his... hearing these things. <laughs> Pardon? Husband loves hearing these things. <laughs> yeah. I um, downloaded his book and read it twice. And I have been catching up with his adventure by reading about his first trip to North and South America, and which caused me to start researching about Alaska and the West Coast of the United States and why. Hey, that's you may my ask. territory. Yeah. So the reason why is if you check out my blog post from Tuesday, I announced my day one of my planning for my North America adventure. I'm in the very, very early stages of planning for my own adventure. So in all of this, plus the fact that I'm in two weeks, I'm two weeks away from my Moab trip and have been planning for that trip as well, I haven't had time to put together this week's Wrangler talk. So I'm just going to share with you about my obsession and my Moab trip. <laughs> um. First, I'd like to say Dan's trip to Alaska looked absolutely amazing. And I was a little surprised when I read about his adventure in Moab. He wrote, he is not much of a 4x4 enthusiast. Oh, Dan, if you're listening, you are surely missing out. However, Dan really, really loves to hike, and he took some amazing hikes. And I'll be doing a little of both when I'm in Moab. My trip originally was my sister togetherness trip. It's something we started a tradition two years ago when we went to San Francisco and Yosemite. Then last year we went to Salem, Massachusetts and drove up the coast of Bar Harbor, Maine. Well, I was so excited because this year I got to pick the destination and of course I picked Moab. And one of those reasons was because of the jeeping and the other is my love for national parks, two of my favorite things. So then my sister bailed on me. So I offered to take my other sisters. I have two more sisters. They said, no, my nieces, my nephews. I said, I'll pay for everything. You just need to pay for your plane ticket. Nobody took me up in the offer. So um, I asked my friend Amanda, who I've gone jeeping with before. She's a fellow jeep mom. And she almost came with me, but um, it looks like it's going to be a solo journey for me, which is okay. I'm going to be fine. Um, I plan on taking a wine and dine cruise on the Colorado River, and it'll end with a cowboy-style dinner. I plan to visit a ghost town, as well as both national parks near Moab. Then, the big day of off-roading. I found an outfitter, Outlaw Jeep Tours, and I signed up for a full day on the trails in their Jeep. I will get behind the wheel of one of their lifted, 4-inch lifted Jeeps with 37-inch tires. Well, under the under the instruction of their guides, and I'll follow them on one of the most famous trails in Moab, Hell's Revenge. And I'm a little tad, I'm a tad nervous because the description says I will be navigating high, steep climbs and heart-pounding descents while taking in some of the most beautiful country around. So I've gotten some comments about not off-roading in my Jeep, but when there is something on your bucket list and you are at my age, a girl's got to do what a girl <laughs> wants to do. <laughs> and time-wise, it's just not possible to take the three- to four-day trek in my Jeep to Moab and then back again. So I'll do the next best thing. And I'm a little sad I won't be with my Jeep, but it will be an amazing trip just to be 
on the world's famous Jeep trail in a Jeep. And it doesn't matter that it's not in my Jeep, just as long as it's not in a red Jeep. (laughs) (laughs) So, folks, anything you'd like to add, um, I'd love to hear from you. Um, There's so many ways you can do that. You can email me at info at jeeptalkshow.com. You can leave a voicemail on our Jeep Talk Show website. Just go over to our site and click on the Leave Voicemail button. And we also have a Jeep Talk Show for a Jeep Talk Forum. It's a mobile-friendly site. You just go to jeeptalkforum.com and follow along with all the great stories we share here. You can add your comments and you can ask questions. We won't tell you to go search on Google. Um, that's jeeptalkforum.com. Hope to see you there. So, Tammy, I, I I just can't help but feel that you you're going to that you're already starting to miss your Jeep not being at Moab. I I just get the feeling you'd li- really like for your vehicle, the one that you have put the time and effort into, and and uh, let's not forget being seen, having it actually seen right. in Moab, which I, I think, think would be I, a big thing. Yeah, I think that's more of. The issue is, well, just driving around, just going, you know, from your hotel to the parks or whatever um, and having it be seen. But I think I, on the trails and driving it there, not putting all those miles on it. Yeah, that's nice. And, <laughs> yeah, and not getting trail damage because that would really suck. Oh, but yeah, I know. But you're already out on the trails and potentially getting trail damage anyway. Right. I don't think, I, actually, I think you would probably be less likely to get trail damage uh, as long as it wasn't a rollover, uh, you might be right. more susceptible to rollovers in Moab. But uh, I, I, I think that really just happens to people that are just overly aggressive. Uh, some of the right. videos that I've seen, I just uh, I hear it's like driving on sandpaper out there. There's supposed to be just very nice, uh, good, right. good like grippy, grippy surface. Yeah. yeah, lots of off camber though. Lots of off camber. Oh my God, I don't like that. So Tammy, if you I'll will be screaming left and right. <laughs> if you'll take a, a couple of photographs or ten. Uh, of uh, like where your Jeep would be, I can always Photoshop it in. Oh, there you go. I'll just stand like this. There we go. Just, uh, yeah, just get this, this shot like uh, we're an empty Hell's self. Revenge or something, yeah. you know. There's nothing in it, but you're taking a picture of it. People think you're insane. And then later on, you'll be posting pictures up of your uh, your Jeep climbing out of there. Not video. I'm not that, I'm not that sophisticated, but I can do stills. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really nervous about the heights, but... Yeah, well, it's uh, well. It'd probably be good that you just go out there uh, uh, as a uh, observer the first time. So, uh, I mean, I know you're going to be uh, involved in going in vehicles and stuff, but it I, it is different when it's your own vehicle. You're a little more concerned about uh, taking care of it, right? Uh, so, oh, and tonight I booked um, a sunset jeep tour, so I'm going to be doing two days ooh, of cool. jeeping. Yeah, oh, really? You know, you said uh, you're going on a cruise down the Colorado River. I thought that's or, all rapids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. It's not all rapids. I just, no, it's not. Okay, Actually, it's we're not gonna, a cruise ship, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's, thinking it's a, it's a jet boat, and they have like the really fast jet boats where you oh, okay. go really fast. But the, the one I'm going on is you get on, they hand you a glass of wine, you cruise up the river, and then you slowly float down. So where 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 speed. one of those plastic beanies on your head? Because I think that wine's going to be on top of your head, even in a jet no, boat. No, no, no. You you, you you got it all wrong. Water wings the whole time. <laughs> and the nose yeah. thing. The little nose clip to keep the water from going in her nose. There you go. <laughs> hey, these are great ideas for selfies, Tammy. I, these are like million dollar ideas. <laughs> I'll, I'll get on that, guys. Go, yeah, make sure, a trip, right away, I'm make sure. a trip to Walmart, pick up these items, and then we'll, we'll see some selfies uh, uh, on the uh, Colorado River. So, Tammy, you, you mentioned red Jeeps, and I can't help but uh, think about reviews. Red Jeeps, reviews, both great things. And we got some reviews, so uh, hopefully they're they're great reviews as well. Yeah, they are, actually. And, of course, folks, if you can find us on the web, you can pretty much find an avenue to leave us a review, whether it's on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, YouTube, even Facebook, you guys can leave us a review. That's right, even give us a rating as well. And on iTunes, we've got a five-star rating there with approaching 100 reviews, guys, so keep those coming. If you haven't given us a comment in a while, well, might be a good time to do so now. Well, we got uh, one from Bring Me ATV. Says, love the show. Gave us a five-star rating and also said, you guys are great. I'm in love with the show. I listen to you guys and Center Steer while I'm at school. You guys are hilarious. Keep up the good work. Tim, who drives a 1993 YJ Sport, by the way. And uh, <clears throat> sorry, Tammy. It's in red. Ah, uh, bummer. 
Ooh, yeah, red Jeeps are sexy. Oh, yeah, they are. <laughs> now, Tammy, you had somebody actually respond to you directly here and gave a little bit of a comment for the show. How'd that all go down? Yeah, well, on Instagram, I replied to a comment of Trail Recon, his picture. I said, hey, cool photo. And he responded back saying, thank you. Listen to episode 35 on my way home today. Great podcast. That's great. Oh, I was hear. checking out the call-in show. Good job. Factory installed lighting isn't always sufficient depending on the type of driving you do, especially if one of those original bulbs are old or have lost their brilliance. So upgrading or adding additional lighting to your vehicle can make a huge difference in both safety and visibility when driving on or off road. And who doesn't want to add a little assurance when you or your loved ones are behind the wheel? Well, we've got your one stop shop for all your lighting needs. Head to HIDExtra.com to view the very best in HID and brand new LED headlight conversion kits for your Jeep and a wide variety of other vehicles too. Each of HID Extra's kits comes with two bulbs, two ballasts, and all the necessary wiring accessories you'll need for a complete hassle-free plug-and-play installation. Oh, is superior lighting and painless installation not enough for you? Well, we're going to hook you up even more. Right now, use code JTS15 to get 15% off your lighting order today. But don't wait. The code is only good until September 2017. After that, you'll be left in the dark. So for the biggest and best selection of headlight and auxiliary lighting upgrades, head to HIDExtra.com today. And don't forget about the discount code JTS15 for 15% off your order. You know, I don't know if you guys are, have been on the fence about uh, getting some decent lighting on your Jeep and you've just been putting up with it and putting up with it and uh, not sure to do it. I got to tell you, it is wonderful being able to drive around and see where you're going. Uh, I think, uh, I know the Cherokees are just notoriously bad, uh, bad lighting, very dim, uh, the headlights on those things. Just replacing the uh, the uh, wiring harness will be a, a big upgrade for you. But, go ahead, you know, have, have a look at these uh, uh, HID Extra uh, bulbs, and I think you'll really enjoy the uh, just the safety aspect of being able to see where you're going, uh, especially in the bad weather. And there's been lots of bad weather in uh, various parts of the country these days. So uh, get over there and up update your uh, uh, your headlights right now. You got tech questions? Ah, oh, what do I ever? We have answers. Oh, that's good. because I, just, I It's Tech Talk with Jeep Talk. Yahoo! Well, this is part one of two in zip ties, duct tape, ratchet straps, and bailing wire. Oh, my. The Tech Talk <laughs> guide to fixing your Jeep went out on the trails. We off-roaders live a strange catch-22 of vehicle ownership. None of us have 4x4s that were ever designed to do the extreme gravity-defying, mountain-climbing, rock-crawling, mud-blasting, or sand-digging that we put our Jeeps through. Sure, you can say that you've re-engineered or purpose-built your Jeep to take the punishment that you administer. But the truth is, is that, well, after you've upgraded your rig, you're more than likely just going to find more treacherous obstacles to go wheel on. Am I right? Well, no matter how low of a set of gears you install or how strong the axle shafts you upgrade to are, you are bound to raise the difficulty of trails you run on to match or exceed what your rig is capable of. Knowing that, we cannot build our Jeeps to be truly indestructible, so we must prepare ourselves for the inevitable part failure out on the trail. You know the kind of failure I'm talking about. It's the kind of breakage that tries to strand you and your family out in the wild in an attempt to make you late for work on Monday morning. That could be a broken steering knuckle, a twisted drive shaft, a torn up frame, or even something like a flat tire that pops up out of nowhere to ruin your good time. Now, the thing you need to remember is that saving your own butt is the name of the game when it comes to trail repairs. Notice I didn't say trail fix. Now, there could be a world of difference between a repair you make out on the trail with your crescent wrench and limited resources versus the type of repair you make in your garage with all your tools and the auto parts store around the corner. I want to talk about the kinds of things you might want to know to get you off the trail and back to civilization, or at the very least, into communication range to get you yourself back to, communi uh, to civilization. Nothing fancy here, people. Just plain old-fashioned solutions to get you back home so you can fix the vehicle correctly. Rule number one. Believe that you can repair anything. It doesn't matter if it's the middle of the night, raining, and the only tools you have are a buck knife and your seven-year-old daughter. There are always possibilities. The key to finding these obscure and creative solutions is to have a calm and open mind. Rule number two, you have to remember to put your personal safety above all else. But as much of a hack as some of these tips are, 
well, they can get you home. And at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. Don't be afraid to get creative with your solutions. Sit back, relax, and contemplate the situation. Oftentimes, the problem will seem to solve itself if you give it some time and a little redneck ingenuity. Rule number three, sometimes more is not better. There are no trail repairs that require a torque wrench or a ratcheting screwdriver, so don't waste the space in your Jeep by carrying them along. The longer you wheel your rig, the more familiar you will become with its particular tool requirements. You'll know what you need and what to leave behind. The most common breakage I've seen over the years out on the trails are U-joints and burr fields. Now, everybody has a slightly different method for swapping out the old broken U-joints or crosses for new ones, but I suggest you find a technique that you are comfortable with and practice. Practice changing them before you hit the trail. Don't practice in the vice or on the workbench because you're not going to have those out on the trail. Try doing one on the tailgate or in the dirt next to your house to simulate a real-world trail repair. See what the essential tools are for you to perform the job keeping in mind that the less tools you need to do to, to use, the better. Now, trust me, the time spent practicing is worth the embarrassment out on the trail that you will then avoid. Okay, now that we have our mindset right and we have a good understanding of what we're looking at when it comes to trail repairs, I'm going to ask you guys to pitch camp for the night. And we'll pick this up in part two of the Tech Talk Guide to Fixing Your Jeep When Out on the Trails, where I'll get into the exact things to do when certain things break when wheeling. Be sure to tune in next week for that one when you're going to want to have some pencil and paper. Trust me, <laughs> I've got a list you won't soon want to forget. And hey, Jeepers, let me know if you guys have a tech question you would like answered here on the Jeep Talk Show. Go to jeeptalkforum.com, even on your smartphone, or shoot me an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com with the subject line Tech Talk. Are you tired of all that noise from those other shows? I think you have to keep that rig at the moment. Now you can relax to the pleasing tones of the Jeep Talk Show every week. Unless you got Dana 60s and 40s. Get the highest audio quality possible with each download. Now, you know, you can use them in with, them, with them super swampers. And if you're tired of all that other stuff. Uh, and a thing with a tank big old tires and a lighter. Then subscribe to the highest quality podcast on the web. The Jeep Talk Show. Available on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher Radio, and more. You guys are getting to give me a beer. Hey, folks, we, di we didn't have a chance to load the voicemails for tonight's show. So be sure and call us in the next week's show for next week's show and give us, I, I mean, Tony, some grief about it. <laughs> Just dial 530-675-4102 five, five, to connect to our 24-7 voicemail line. Hey, don't want to wait, uh, don't want to use your minutes rather on your phone? Well, then head over to the website, jeeptalkshow.com and click on the leave message button on the right of the screen. It's just like an answering machine on the interwebs. So I got to ask you guys, uh, Tammy, Josh, have you gone mm -hmm. over to our survey and filled it out yet? I personally have not. I was trying to, to, to remain, you know, unbiased and, and have a, a true cross section of what our listeners look like. And that's what this is all about is trying to learn a little bit more about what you guys, our listeners, look like so we can better tailor our show to you guys. Well, that's, that's very thoughtful and logical, but damn it, go over there to the survey and fill it out. <laughs> How about yes, you, sir. Tammy? Did you, fill, did you fill it out? Uh, um, yeah, I, I mean, you guys, listen, you, yeah, yeah, sure. you guys listen to the show. Uh, oh, I mean, dog ate my homework. I don't, I don't. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, the question is, have you filled out the survey yet? Go over to uh, jeeptalkshow.com slash survey. Take a couple of minutes and fill out our survey. It's, it's really simple. I mean, you've done it before. It's just, uh, you're doing it for us this time. You know, you like us, go do it. It's the right thing to do. <laughs> All right. Well, oh, we got a little Nikki G coming was, up, don't we? Yeah. Filling out the survey. So sorry. Something we look forward to each and every week. And that's hearing from the mind of Nikki G. From the mind of Nikki G. God, I hope this is the current one. Hey, this is Nikki G. <laughs> and uh, I'm just out here at Sir Craft Hot. Oh, no. Calm oh, down. I'm going to ask him. <laughs> he, he's got a question for Stomp, Stomp Josh. I know. I know. Oh, that's so funny. Uh, he wants to know why is it called getting him fixed when it obviously doesn't work anymore. <laughs> yeah, I know, buddy. She took mine, too. Oh, God, I went to the wrong place. Wait, the fly planes over my house right when I call. <laughs> Damn, definitely. All right, boys, go to the chat today. It's the co-workers uh, giving them a hard time. <laughs> fly over to Nikki <laughs> G's house. <laughs> you can't miss it. It's covered in aluminum foil. <laughs> oh, that was nice for him to get Sir Craps a lot involved. 
I just that don't was so know. Cute. I just don't know what he he may have been doing to him. What contraption he may have hooked had him hooked up one of those little Lionel train transformers or something to make him howl like that. Oh gee, I hope uh, you know no Nikki G's were harmed in the making of that voicemail. All right, well uh, let's get over to a little must-have stuff for your Jeep. And Tammy, is this actually for a Jeep? Well, you know when you're out on the trails and you're driving. Um, you need shoes that are really good for when you need to get out of your Jeep, maybe to, you know, walk and go watch other Jeeps go over obstacles or, you know, your Jeep is stuck and you have to get out and, you know, do whatever you need to do to fix it. Well, you walk over and then, there and you put you, you point at that uh, Dana 35 axle that is slid out and go, well, there's <laughs> your problem. <laughs> then you walk uh, back and get in your Jeep. <laughs> but you need to have really good, safe shoes, especially, you know, if you're on some, you know, rocky terrain type stuff and then you also you don't want those big heavy hiking boots when you're in your jeep driving you want something comfortable so you um this was my must-have stuff for your jeep the merrill women's moab ventilator hiking shoe and you can get it at amazon and it's a synthetic sole and the heel measures approximately at one and a half inches it bellows tongue keeps out the debris and it's a breathable mesh lining Wicks to keep the feet dry, and Tony and Josh, I bought them for myself. Well, of hey, course you good did. Job. Good and lord, that's I, huge! Oh, you must have it close yeah. to the camera. Yeah, I have big feet, <laughs> and it comes in all sorts of colors. And mine has purple accents on them, so I've been breaking them in so I can wear them um, when I go on my trip. And I absolutely love them, and I posted them on my Facebook page, and you would not believe. The comments, not just on Facebook, but Twitter and Instagram, about other people who have the Merrill brand of hiking shoe, and they say they're fabulous. Very so you good. Can check them good. out yeah. at was it Jeep Talk Show? Jeep Talk Show dot com slash Amazon. Amazon. Now, Tammy, let me ask you a question. Uh, as far as traction goes, now all too many times we have to get out of our jeeps, maybe hike up the trail a little bit to either go observe somebody, maybe spot somebody else, or just scope out the trail that we're about to tackle ourselves, uh, and, you know, looking for obstacles and, and dangers and that, that sort of thing. Do you believe that those shoes have good off-road traction for climbing up and down trails without slipping? Oh, totally. I read the reviews, and um, most these, these weren't really meant for Jeepers. It's meant for hikers. Um, and all the people who bought them for hiking said they they did a fabulous job. Oh, very when good. They were out hiking. So, do you think uh, do you think it'll be easy to break them in, or do you think that'll be uh, full of blisters and crying? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I okay. hopefully they they're very comfortable. Are they are they good. really tight, or can you wear a couple of uh, pairs of socks if you need? Oh to? yeah. I, well, I bought a, a larger size, uh, like a size up. So, because I, you know, the- I think that's how you get out, get away from the blisters is if you if you put a p- couple of pair of socks on it, it kind of cushions that uh, right. for you. I thought you were going to say something, Josh. Um, no, no, it's nothing important. So uh, I don't know if you guys have ever uh, ever noticed this or not. Uh, you get out of your jeep that has been easily transversing a a very mild trail, and you get out of your jeep and you got to walk up a, a a slight incline, and you're going, holy hell! <laughs> <laughs> I need to get back in the Jeep and drive up this, this little incline. It's, it's, this is tough going. It's just amazing to me, uh, how, how hard it is to move around on two legs sometimes whenever the Jeep just goes through there very easily. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You look at it and, and all the pictures, you know, that makes it look like, uh, I could just walk right up that. Oxygen. Oh, I got a question for you on, uh, when you guys go off road, AC or no AC? Uh, well, the AC in my Jeep uh, hasn't worked in years thanks to some road debris that came up and knocked a nice fat hole in, in my condenser. But uh, uh, that will soon be changing because I, I have all the replacement parts for that. But uh, I, I believe in, in AC and, and, and for a couple of reasons. One, um, if you're out on dusty trails, having yeah. that recirc, uh, recirculation going so you're just recirculating the air inside the cabin instead of pulling air from the outside, pulling that dusty air from the outside. It's nice to be able to sort of filter some of that out and, uh, and cool down the air inside the cabin all, all while you're at it. Uh, so, you know, this, 
wheeling while you're sticky and hot and everything else, it's, I mean, it's still wheeling and it's still getting out in nature and you're still having fun, but if you can do it more comfortably, yeah, why not? Yeah. I bet you, you're, you're an AC girl, right? Um, you know, it hasn't really been cause I'm up in the mountains and I just, I don't recall it really being super hot when I wheel. Well, it's nice. Uh, it, yeah. it, it's nice to have the smells and the sounds and everything, but, but I'd, I'd have the window down and the AC going if I needed to <laughs> just have it blow. Well, oh me. yeah. I've done that. Or the window down and the heat going. Yeah. Well, now, I like, I like to hang out the window myself. You know, I, <laughs> right. there's, no, ser- no I'm being, I'm being dead serious. I've, I've got actually marks in my armpit from, you know, pinched skin and, and broken blood vessels from hanging over the edge of, of, you know, door sill, you know, windows and whatnot, just you know, spotting myself as I go up the trail. And, you know, that's what the whole thing with half doors is. You know, the big attraction yeah. with half doors is being able to hang your torso right. out of the Jeep and really kind of get, you know, see what's going on in front of that in front of that front tire and, and really paying close attention to your tire placement and all that stuff. You can't do that when you're, you know, sitting back and seat belted in and, and you know, enjoying your air conditioning with the windows up. Yeah, I was just going to say you need a half door, uh, at least that's what you should do, Josh. It's just one half door, just the driver's that's side it. half door. Who cares about the passenger? You don't need to see what I'm doing. <laughs> Not until I tell you to anyway. It'd be, it'd be heavier on that side. You're going to roll it on that side because the extra 50 pounds of weight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk some more about stuff on the uh, campfire uh, side chat. Man, we are just blazing through this show, folks. Yeah, going to have a uh, short show for you guys this week. Uh, well, hey, uh, I had an interesting <laughs> weekend, actually. I was working on uh, an older Jeep that not too many people are really familiar with. It's the old Commandos, or the Jeepsters, uh, if you will. Oh, wow. And uh, I had a buddy who's uh, who's sort of doing a, a re- uh, restoration mod build of a 67, I think it is, 67 Jeep. I can't remember the year of it now. I'm going to... I know I'm going to get somebody calling me saying, they didn't make him a 67. <laughs> That's not a, no, it wasn't that one. It'll be a stump um, Josh question. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but uh, he's, he's, well, he's doing some weird things. He's, he's pulling some fenders off of a 70s version because they've got like corner markers on it that the other ones didn't. Um, he's moving the actual firewall uh, to push the engine back a little bit further to, to uh, you know, close up the center of gravity a little bit. Uh, he's oh, doing a completely goodness. custom frame on this thing. And that's why I was over there uh, is because I've been helping him out with the engineering and all the dimensioning and, and whatnot for the fabrication of the custom body mounts, which I helped him out on the engineering for, um, and then setting all them up in relation to how they're going to actually, you know, how the tub is going to mount on this frame. Uh, because things are going to be shifted a little bit from where a Jeepster would normally sit on a frame because he's dropping in an LS7 into this thing. And so it's it's not going to be the uh, the you know the old V6 or anything. It's going to be a very modern V8. Um, he's he's going to be uh, doing coilovers on this thing. It's going to be sort of a a pseudo sand monster slash rock crawler. Um, and uh, all this thing's ever going to see is the you know the the highway or the highway 101 down by the coast, some rocks and some sand. And so uh, he was, you know, needing some help with the next phase of things. And I, it was nice to get out there and work on on a completely different kind of Jeep, doing a completely different kind uh, of work that you don't ordinarily get to do. And so setting up body mounts and getting those tacked in and, and, and positioned right and, and test fitting the tub and all that stuff. And it was, a, you know, an all day process. And uh, and by the end, we got a pretty, you know, pretty fair amount of progress going and and uh, and some good direction of how we're going to, you know, start moving on with this project. And so. Uh, a lot, a lot of fun. Anyways. So, so when you were looking at the the stuff that was uh, that makes this thing into a Jeepster uh, Commander, what uh, mm-hmm. did you did you recognize things from the like the Cherokee perspective, or, or was it wildly different? Uh, wildly different. Now he has a Cherokee. Uh, he's got a, a ninety eight or ninety nine uh, XJ uh, that is very well built, uh, and it, I've actually taken a couple cues off of his builds for uh, some inspiration on some of my own stuff, and and vice versa. This is this is a Jeepster, a, a Jeeper I've not I've known for for many many years, and um, and he's this is just one of his projects that that he's been taking on over the last couple few years, and. And it's moving it into high gear because, uh, you know, he's not getting any younger and neither is his wife. And, uh, and they want to get this thing done and enjoy it before, you know, the golden years are gone. So uh, and I'm more than, more than happy to help him out. So uh, nothing looked the same to you. 
So well, I mean, we're we're talking about a steel tub, a body on frame vehicle uh, that had a drivetrain and uh, you know power plant that wasn't used in any of the Jeeps that we're you know more familiar with as far mm-hmm. as you know, XJs, TJs, JKs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you know, as far as you know, are there things that you would see on other Jeeps? Sure, leaf springs and solid axles. Yeah, 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 but I mean, you know, things like, like that. Not a Dana but 35, no. not a Dana 30. No, no, no. You know, no, nothing, no, no, no. nothing you would think of, you know, maybe if you're talking about the more modern day Jeeps. So that's that's going to be an interesting thing to me as you see how, how it was being done. Still a Jeep, but seeing how it was being done in a mer- much earlier time. I know you guys well, with CJs this- are screaming at me, I, but I've never seen a CJ up close to see how it goes oh. together. So. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, there very well may be similarities in like the the actual seat mounts and the way they they bolt into the tub between a a, a Jeepster and, and a CJ. You know, there's little things like that which are so obscure. Um, it's not it's not in my wheelhouse of information, but uh, um, you know, the stuff that that I was doing with this particular build is very very one off, very specific. I mean, we're talking custom frame, custom body mounts. I mean, these are not over the shelf type of things. These are not Stuff that you can just fabricate oh, in your yeah. garage in a weekend type of stuff. This is this is you know, completely custom stuff here. Well, that's going to be rough taking it off road and looking at uh, potentially for the uh, first the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm I, I'm going to be with him on that maiden voyage, and I'm going to be puckering as much as he is. I'm sure because I mean he's he's going all out with this thing uh, from you know painting the frame, you know having that treated and everything to to uh, the body work and everything else. This this thing is going to be a very unique, one-of-a-kind Jeepster, and I can't wait to share it with you guys when it's done. So it almost sounds like this could be uh, as different as, say, a uh, an X-Wing and a, a B-Wing or even an A-Wing fighter. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you could, uh, you could look at it like that. See what I did there? Made the four. A little, 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 little Star Wars. with you, indeed. Little, little Star Wars reference. <laughs> Got to squeak aye, one aye, in there. Aye, aye. <laughs> So Tammy, Tammy, I'm sure that you know some of that stuff might have been a little bit over your head. Do you have any questions about like body mounts or, or frames or how to you know setting that stuff sort of stuff up? Anything that spiked your curiosity in any of that? Well, I know where the body mounts are, and I messed with them um, with my sliders. Oh, um, did you? Did you have to loosen them up and jack the body yeah. out of the way? Wow. Um, the one thing I found interesting that I didn't know. Um, when I put on the sliders is that you can't just tighten one and then go to the next one to put my sliders on. You had to like tighten a little bit and then this one and then the next one and then just slowly, um, tighten them all, you know, in, in sync. That's something Otherwise, that I, that's something I always have difficult doing. I always want to tighten it, tighten that one down, move on to the next right. one. But oh, yeah, no, cause they were not, they weren't going, they weren't, you know, adhering um, so the, until the purpose, I started doing I'm, that. I'm sorry. The, the purpose of leaving them loose then was to so that you could have some wiggle room to to help line the the next one down the line up before you know things get too tight. Is that is that what the reason was for that? You know, I I don't know. They just weren't when I first was you know like when I first tr- I tightened the first one and then then none of them would like grab. Oh yeah. Like, so they mm, weren't they weren't yeah. lined up. That's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then finally, when I figured it out, I'm like, oh, so the putting on the second one was was pretty easy. Yeah, that's, well, a, first time, that's a learning a learning curve that you go through whenever you're you're first putting things on vehicles, uh, not tightening down that first bolt until you get the, all of them started. Yeah, right. first I was thinking, you know, it, you know, to combat, you know, bow and twist or anything like that. But then I started thinking, well, it's like, no, you know, you're going to want those holes to line up and you're going to, you don't have a whole lot of room to get things to line up just perfectly and get those threads to grab. So having things loose along the way gives you that room to kind of shift things a little bit, you know, kind of mm-hmm. you know pivot something, you know, to get that thread, you know, get that thread started, get that nut or get that, uh, get that bolt seated. So Tammy, you know, there's one place that I would not mind going, and that's Alaska, especially with Dan from the 4x4 podcast living up there right now and sharing all, oh, this, yeah. all the pictures that he's uh, that he's been sharing, and the especially the northern lights. I think seeing the northern lights would just be amazing. And uh, I think you were mentioning earlier about uh, you're thinking about Alaska and, and some of your overlanding stuff. Yeah, I was um, just, you know, like I said, I'm obsessed with Dan from The Road Chose Me. Not Not him like i'm in love with him or anything but um Thank you. I, i'm obsessed with his what he's doing and his adventure and um i mean he's mostly 
you know, overlanding. He's not like off roading per se. And um, just Alaska looks amazing and beautiful. And so I've been doing a lot of research the past couple of days on that. And one of the things that I've kind of struggling with is, you know, saving money so I can go on this trip and what's next for my Jeep. And kind of now I'm thinking being more conservative on what I buy um, and what's important that will help me in the long run for these trips. Good thinking, um, Tammy. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, a winch for sure. Oh, and yeah. I think that's oh, going to be my yeah. next Man, purchase. I have to have that, yes. Yeah. And so I think that will, I'm going to need a lot of everybody's help because I have no earthly idea where to even begin or what I would need um, and kind of like the recovery stuff. And then the other thing is, um, Dan has the little sleeper top thing. I don't know. I don't even know what it's called. Um, pop up oh, camp. The, the pop yeah. top camper top. Yeah. And then I'm thinking, God, that would be really cool. But then I wouldn't be able to go topless. But do you want to go topless in Alaska? You know, yeah, the bears. So pre- the bears prefer it. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's like just, a buffet. I, I'm kind of in a different mindset now about jeep parts you know and being more conservative and purchasing the things that will benefit me in the long run i don't know i can't think of really anything that you that you couldn't put on there i mean certainly the accents and the color accents don't won't have anything to do with that but uh, right right but that's you kind of wasting the, money now you got the bumper front and bumper on there uh right. you, you need a winch uh you got right. a lift um that's the only thing I could say that you might be concerned about is one of the things that Dan mentioned in uh, episode 35 of uh, the Jeep Talk call show, the interview we did with him, uh, The Road Chose Me, which you already mentioned, um, is uh, he went with, a, I think, a 10 and a half inch tire. Maybe it was nine and a half inch. So it was like right. like it was like 34 inches, I think, 34 and a half or something, by, but very narrow because he wanted to keep the, uh, the, the gas mileage up. So. Right. Well, not only that, other- it was also availability of a spare should he go through right. you know, the ones that were on the vehicle plus the, the spares that he had. Could he, in Africa, get a replacement tire that's going to work with the Jeep and, and, and all the other ones out there? And, and right. so I, he chose a tire that would be available almost you know, globally. Right. And he's, you know, he's not really... I mean, I, he is on some rutted roads and going through some water and stuff. So I guess the height could be, you know, a, a advantageous. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, I think you know, it always clearance. is. Yeah, I yeah. think clearance sure. is always important because you never know what you're going to find out there. And especially in uh, in situations where there's not a lot of people to uh, take care of the road surfaces. I mean, if, right. if there was exactly. a big a big storm or something moved through there, uh, you could literally be stranded if you weren't able to get up and over um i I don't know trees telephone poles uh, all kinds of crap so and i just read what could be go ahead tammy oh no i was just gonna say i just read there is a road that's out in um alaska because of you know high water well i'm I'm glad you brought that up one of the uh one of the actual most famous destination points in alaska for for expedition is is the famous dalton highway uh, the James right. W. Dalton Highway, the 414 mile road in Alaska begins at the Elliott Highway north of Fairbanks and ends at Dead Horse near the Arctic Ocean and, and the and the Purdue oil uh, fields. And then it's just I had a an, a Naxja member years ago who who did that with his off road trailer set up very similar to how Dan is set up um, at the Four by Four podcast with with his uh, overlanding rig and and he did that Dalton Highway uh, trip and ended up actually blowing his transmission on the way back. Uh, oh. Which was, uh, yeah, kind of a, a, a kind of a game changer right there. That kind of ended his whole trip. But, um, but yeah, that's one of those things where you know that I, if I'm not mistaken, some of that road is not open year round. You can't get through it uh, in in certain parts of the year. So there may right. be other you know places like that, not just in Alaska, but other places where you know the road is only open during certain parts of the year. We've got something out here. Um, there's a, there's a, a pass that goes up there or a highway that goes up through a pass that is only, uh, gets shut down every winter. Uh, it just becomes completely unpassable because there's too much snow. The snow falls too fast and too deep for them to plow it because it would end up being just a 24 seven, um, plowing operation. So they shut down this, you know, section of the highway, uh, for two or three months every year. Wow. 
Oh, and you the know, other thing too. Uh, sorry, Tony. The other thing is um, stuff inside your Jeep. You know, like he has a refrigerator and the solar power stuff, and just like reworking the inside of my Jeep. I mean, as long as you have uh, internet service, you should be able to uh, uh, order food. Call from, Amazon. Well, uh, order food order from pizza, Uber Eats. Yeah, <laughs> yeah pizza. Uh, Domino's. Um, no, really, can you come out to Campsite Fifty Nine instead of an address? You just give them a uh, some coordinates. Uh, <laughs> so a lat long. Uh, this is where I want my food. Now, I was gonna, yep. what I was going to ask you about was: uh, Have you considered a uh, a snorkel? You know, uh, no. Um, you might first, want to water crossings yeah, and uh, especially yeah, dusty just, roads. I hate water. I hate yeah, well, water, but yeah, but it you, would be safer. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So just just lots of like I said, I'm in the beginning stages of this. I hope it comes to and you know where I can do it. Oh, there's um, no hoping it's going to happen. Yeah. Damn it! It's just a matter um, of time. You, you know, know, it's not going to be a, it's not going to be a two year you know journey that's for sure um and i'm certainly i would love well, not to if do you want your family there when you doing. come back sure <laughs> what? i said not if you want your family to be there when you get back yeah, sure exactly. you're gonna have to Mommy do it a little bit us. less than two years <laughs> and had- the, the the cool thing about it is um and i was thinking of doing it over the summer is you know maybe like in three to five years and my son will be in his 20s my Ooh. oldest son and so I was bringing this up to him, and Michael is very interested in doing this with me. Oh, so that's great. That's great for a change, that would be too. Cool. So I get to see this. You know, uh, yeah, I lost my mom uh, to an addiction. Oh, really? Alcohol? No. <laughs> Drugs? No. Jeep? Oh, that's the worst one. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, there'll be, there's going to be several books written, Tammy. Yeah. So it's, it's you know, just the, the very teeny tiny stages beginning, so... And it's overwhelming. It's like, oh. Like you All right, Tammy, about, uh, no. question of the hour. Do you have a list? Oh, she's have you all gotten about anything lists. on paper yet? Oh, yeah. I've started a list. I've Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to um, put it all on my blog. All my lists, my Jeep gear list, my, you know, camping gear list, my where am I going to go list. And I'm just, it's all going to be journaled on my blog. And um, what I want is everybody else out there to help me, you know, plan this. Well, I was just about to ask if, if on your blog, you're going to be, uh, you know, asking for suggestions or taking people's advices as far as things to add to that list. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Cause I'm, you know, and I'll have to get with Dan from the four by four podcast to, to have him, you know, help me plan. And well, it takes a village. Yep. And Dan, <laughs> um, with the road shows me said he's gonna he's gonna help me out too so that'll be way fun. cool way cool well i've already checked out your 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 most recent uh addition to the blog it looks pretty good you definitely have the right mindset so i, I can't wait to see how this ends up developing uh over the next you know year or so however uh, however right. long it takes so but in the meantime i still want to do my you know i'm still going to do my 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 yearly trips and um I'm hoping to do the Rubicon Trail next year, not with my Jeep, of course. Oh, well, um, that makes two of us. But I'll be doing yeah. it with my Jeep. <laughs> you're a little well, you're, closer. You're a little closer. Yeah, yeah little closer. I am a little closer. It's still maybe a long drive. maybe on my um, Alaska North America trip, I'll swing back down and oh, there we go. California and drive by yeah. Josh's house and throw yeah. some stinky stuff. Wait for Josh. <laughs> I might. Hey, I, I need might, to do uh, some laundry. I'm just going to pass through. Yeah. <laughs> I've I've met lots of people from California um, who said they would take me out on the trail. So even just to be there, I don't necessarily have to, to drive my Jeep just to say I've been there and seen it. And to me, that's what it's all about. I yeah, don't necessarily absolutely. always have to drive my Jeep. I don't know. I've had mine for so long. I would love to just drive it out there to Moab. I, I, uh, I probably should just do that. Uh, it, it, I, I wish I had a trailer. That I could, uh, you know, tow it out there. Yeah. And that way, I'd be sure that I was able to. Yeah. Well, I, I'm get sorry, back. I can't say sure. Uh, more than likely, I would be able to <laughs> get there and get back, in, in you know, uh, okay in a timely manner. But well, uh, how far is it for you to Moab? Uh, well, I'm in China, so it's halfway around the world. So it's uh, no, I don't know. I, I think <laughs> shut up. I think it's about uh, about 16, 17 hours or, or, oh, or longer. Oh, that's not too bad. 
No, I th- actually, I'm thinking of this out of Texas. I haven't looked at it. Uh, I need to go back and look at it. It might be a lot more than that. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, so let me uh, let me switch gears real quick. I don't know if uh, if you guys caught or not. You may not care, uh, and you guys may not care, uh, Josh, Tammy. But uh, if you have a garage that has uh, torsion springs that won't uh, uh, that break, and you can't open it to get your beloved Jeep out of the garage, I know people out there screaming. You keep your Jeep in the garage. Where do you store I all do. your stuff? Because <laughs> well, we're one of the few people on the in the block here that actually have our vehicles parked inside the garage. It seems like everybody and their mama has the the Jeeps parked on the street or in the driveway because the garage is like uh, the 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 building that you should build in the back and fill up before you start filling up the garage. So uh, anyway, that happened to us one time about six, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, where the garage door just wouldn't open, and that that thin metal door, I just really wouldn't think it was that heavy, but I, I literally oh, yeah. couldn't lift that thing without you know uh, starting to really uh, deform the the metal, just trying to get it up in the track. So those those torsion springs are, are just do a, a whole hell of a lot of work. So um, I uh, I purchased them from Amazon after watching a couple of videos and learning how to measure the springs properly, the the, uh, the wire size that was used, the length of the spring, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, re- <clears throat> replaced the uh, the one broken spring and the the other spring that was not broken. Uh, replaced that last weekend. The garage door is opening and closing just fine. Thank you very much. So uh, I think that all total, I spent seventy one dollars uh, with additional f- uh, fast shipping. To get those uh, springs in a little quicker, eleven dollars I think is what I paid extra. So I, I spent seventy-one bucks. It came with the uh, the the little rods that you use to, to tension the uh, the springs to torque them or whatever it's called uh, to right. put put the spring in it, I guess. And uh, that's it. I mean, it literally was like under an hour to replace these things. Uh, and I used a crescent wrench because I couldn't find the a damn socket that would fit over those uh, four sided bolts that they use. Uh, so that took a little longer just having to use a crescent wrench, but, um, uh, you know, you hear about this danger about the, the torsion springs and stuff. And I think you'd have to be some kind of stupid to get, to get hurt by one of these things. Cause even if it broke, it's on a, it's on a big long metal rod and it's not going to sever the rod and come out and hunt you down in the, the wee hours of the night and slap you around. <laughs> it's, it, it's going to be, it's going to stay on the rod. I mean, think, I think eye protection is always important. But uh, you know, that was I was quoted two hundred and fifty dollars to replace those uh, those torsion springs, and I tell you what, man, if uh, if I was uh, in my uh, in my twenties, maybe uh, early thirties, I might start a garage door business because that's like uh, <laughs> that's like money for nothing, man. <laughs> that's 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 quick, easy work for uh, for good money. So, uh, oh, uh, the fourth and I think final. LED overhead light uh, has come in, and that will be installed in the garage this weekend. Uh, and I should have ample lighting for working on vehicles inside the garage. Um, I'm very excited. Well, it's about, about this. time. Oh, yeah. Wait, how many? How I many? How many times have you been out there working on your uh, your Jeep, Josh? Maybe you got a late start, and you didn't time the daylight properly. <laughs> oh yeah, no. There's there's been a couple of times where you know I yeah I start off you're doing something and oh, okay I'm gonna come in for dinner and then you go out back out there a couple hours later and it's like I can't see a damn no, thing. <laughs> it's horrible. Even if you're in the garage with the lights on, you know yes. there's a, it's it's amazing how much just ambient daylight filters into the garage and allows you to see what you're doing. So ha- having having a decent amount of light there to you know shine it down or that you can move around and stuff it, it really makes a huge difference when you're doing repairs. Yep. So I'm lo- looking forward to getting that uh, that one in, and the next time I go to do something on the uh, work on the garage, I mean work in the garage on uh, one of the vehicles, hopefully I'll be able to see a whole hell of a lot better. It'll never be enough. You, you can never have enough light, but it it'll be a damn sight better than pitch dark. Right. By the way, Tony, you're 19 hours to Moab. Oh, I wasn't that far off then. I'm 15. Oh, oh. I, I'm, I'm surprised by that, Josh. I thought you'd be a lot closer. No, it's it's Utah. I mean, I'm I'm West Coast man, so I got to cross a couple states. So that'd be a couple of excuse me, a couple of days of driving, I guess, if you uh, if you did it the right way. I mean, if yeah. I did it the right way. Well, I'd, you know, it's it's one of those things where I'd I'd leave at like three o'clock in the morning, and then you know, yeah, I'd get you would there, just go straight get there through. late that same day. 
I'm yeah. I'm a trooper. I can I can do that kind of drive. I think 19 days 19 hours would be kind of kind of rough, especially if uh, that would be if the rough. wife yeah. was going with me. Ooh. All right. Well, I'm let's... at I'm at 30 hours. Oh, that's that's a bit much. Well, you just <laughs> yeah. you just need a driver. You need some young 20 year old to uh, help drive uh, the vehicle with you. Right. Right. Be, that's uh, a long. That way, if I did that by myself, geez, that would take two me days. three to four days. So you could, oh, no, you could get too much. You could get yeah. You could get one of those uh, those uh, foot rests that go on the you know in the door hanger, and then the whole three days you drive with your foot, and you do a video right. of your foot out the whole three day trip. Right. <laughs> How many bugs you get caught between your toes? You know, uh-huh. oh, that's a lovely or shade could, of toe polish. No, that's bug guts. Oh, uh, purple right. purple toes. All right, so let's get over to some wheeling wear. Yeah, this is where we're going to talk about what events are coming up in your neck of the woods and around the nation. Uh, Coming up June 2nd through the 4th at the Silver Lake Sand Dunes, we've got the Jeep Invasion happening. Uh, This is the second annual uh, uh, you know, second annual event of this uh, for this, and uh, everyone needs to try and make it up to Michigan. They are the only sand dunes east of Utah that you guys can drive your Jeep on, so this is one heck of an event that you want to be a part of. For more information, head over to slsdjeepinvasion.com. We also have uh, Genrite presenting the Overland Expo 2017 West happening May 12th through the 14th at the Fort Tuthill County Fairground and Park in Flagstaff, Arizona. Uh, this is uh, the true outdoor adventure extravaganza, people. Genrite will be on location to show you guys how to outfit your Jeep for your next overlanding endeavor so you can enjoy the experience without having to worry about your Jeep's capability. The event is unlike any other as it teaches about overlanding, and you can get your uh, next off-road adventure set up when, well, a little bit more experience with 170 classes available for your education. They've got a film festival, on-site and nearby camping, and so much more. Check it out at overlandexpo.com slash west. And coming up May 17th through the 21st, just about another week or so away, we've got the, the big Jeep Beach Jam happening in Panama City, Florida. Uh, for more information on this, head over to Jeep uh, jeepbeachjam.com. <laughs> That's all easy for me to say. Thousands of Jeep owners and enthusiasts and club members will all gather in Panama City Beach, Florida next May uh, for the second Jeep Beach Jam, organized and developed by local promoter Mark Hess of GBJ Productions. This five-day family-oriented event is going to be filled with fun in the sun activities that will prove to be one of the highest sought-over Jeep festivals in the complete southeastern United States. Concerts, raffles, a huge Jeep parade honoring our veterans, giveaways, and lots more. Once again, head over to jeepbeachjam.com. Hey, I was just noticing in the uh, uh, YouTube chat, uh, Bradley says, uh, Hey guys, listening to your podcast while I'm running, keep them coming. Uh, white JKU. We'll see. You get some Ooh, red on there. Then you, got, then you got a, oh, please. <laughs> then you got a Jeep. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate you uh, jumping in there. Hey, don't forget us to uh, forget to give us an actual review. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, we uh, broadcast this show live every Thursday night, 10 p.m. Central Time on uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash Jeep Talk Show. Or you can also go over to jeeptalkshow.com and uh, we have our own little homegrown chat there. So, uh, Hope to see you here for the live shows, but uh, listen anytime. Uh, that's that's what it's all about, is just listening and enjoying the show. Hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, we want you to know the Jeep Talk Show is also available in all the only format. Uh, easy for me to say. Great to listen to while commuting or while working on your Jeep. Subscribe via iTunes, tuned in, Google Play, or iHeartRadio and never miss an episode. If you'd like to contribute financially to the show, you can do so by going to the JeepTalkShow.com website and clicking the PayPal button to subscribe annually starting at $12 or select the other button for one-time donation. We do this show because we enjoy it and it's free. No financial support will ever be necessary. Did you know it can take up to four days for your favorite podcast episode to show up on Apple iTunes? It's true. iTunes is a great free service and we appreciate Apple for all their hard work. But we want our listeners to get the Jeep Talk Show as quickly as possible. That's why we are recommending that all of you iTunes users subscribe to our podcast. No multi-day delay and you'll get the newest episode much quicker. Hey, speaking of subscribing, make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jeep Talk Show. It's how we broadcast the show live twice a week. And hey, every subscriber we get, every 100 subscribers, hey, Tony's going to get himself a nice big cookie. Oh, we can't play the Cookie Monster thing. I got a letter from uh, the Sesame Street. It was in crayon, by the way. 
Oh, geez. Hey, join the Yikes. Jeep Talk Show ch- team. We're looking for volunteers to manage our vast social media presence on the web. You can be the Jeep Talk Show social media voice. Send an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com to find out more. Hey, don't forget, folks, you can get more Jeep Talk Show with Tammy and Tony on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Central Time on Jeep Talk Show and Jeep Talk Call-In Show, new live call-in show where it's all about you and your Jeep. That's it for this week, guys. Wherever you're wheeling, if you pack it in, make sure you pack it out. At least leave our outdoor recreation spots in as good, if not better condition when they were when we arrived. Remember to always tread lightly, stand in the trails, and don't wheel where you're not supposed to. If you'd like to learn more about the tread lightly principles and how you can help keep your public lands and trails open for off-road use, head over to www.treadlightly.org. You, <gasps> you had no <sighs> chance. You started with 10 seconds left. Uh, you <laughs> Freaking screwed I know. me! I know. Chuck me under the bus by that thirty-second diatribe about nothing in the beginning. There, I, <laughs> leaving me no time. I, I said I quit. Hey, folks! Don't forget, um, you can follow me on my Jeep journey over at my blog at www.jeepmama.com. And hey, guys, if you need a voice for your product or business, be sure to reach out to me over at thevoiceofjosh.com. 